What you're about to listen to is the Moore GE300 amp modeling synth and multi-effects processor pedal going directly into my computer, which is the preferred way of running these. Now, I wrote this backing track specifically for this video. It basically wrote itself because I was loving the tones I was getting out of this. Let's take a listen. Welcome back to the channel folks, my name's Shane. I hope you like that brand new backing track. I wrote it specifically for this video. This thing inspired me in terms of its clean tones, which is pretty rare on digital units. They don't normally nail that clean tone, but I was loving what I was getting out of that deluxe reverb preset. So if you enjoyed the backing track, please give the video a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Now, depending on what kind of tones you're going for with your style of playing, I've actually left some time codes in the description so you can go ahead and check out the clean tones, the crunch tones, the high gain tones, and something really, really random and weird at the end of the video. Firstly though, a massive thanks to Moore for sending this out. I really appreciate it. If you wanna find out more about this, I'll leave some links in the description below. But overall, it's a pretty great recording tool. That intro track basically wrote itself, which is pretty rare. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. All right, let's take a listen to how this sounds before we do anything. We're gonna build our own clean tone starting from scratch. So to me, that just sounds like it's going straight into the sound card with no effects. That's essentially what's going on. So we wanna add an amp and a cabinet to get the most out of this, or at least as a starting platform. So we click amp on the front here. Now all of these controls associate with the on-screen controls and the amp type is controlled with this button here or this potentiometer. So if we turn this to deluxe reverb, we can then change the bass, the middle and the treble however we like. That's pretty cool. We're gonna crank up the gain because we can, even though a deluxe reverb doesn't have a gain control. <laughs> We're gonna do that anyway. If we're gonna get to the bottom row and adjust some parameters, we can push this button and then we can change the tube type. I'm gonna put it onto 6v6 because that's what a deluxe reverb is. And now if we go back up to the top, there's one called original mode and also distinct mode. And we'll take a listen to that in just a moment. 
Now we want to add a cabinet as well. So we add touch the cab button, it comes up here and it's already set to deluxe reverb, which is great. And we're going to add a little bit of reverb. So if we go over to spring, now one of the things about spring reverb on this, it's really, really wet sounding. So put it around 14 or 15, it should sound pretty good with just one millisecond pre-delay. Now have a listen to the difference between how it sounded before and now. So it sounds nice and full. It sounds like a mic'd up deluxe reverb. It's maybe a hair brighter than I'm used to, but we can easily just change that up. So there's also, if we go back to the amp setting here, we can simply just adjust the treble using this control and bring that back a little bit and have a listen now. I think that sounds pretty damn good. All right. So one other mode you can do is original and distinct mode. Let's go over to distinct mode now. And back to original mode. So that option's there. If you do like it, you can choose which one you like best. Let's do the same process now, but we're gonna set up a really cool crunch sound. And for this one, I'm using the J800. Let's give this a go, we'll crank up the gain, crank up the bass, a little bit less mids. Maybe back off the treble just a hair as well. For the cab, I wanna see if we can find, where is it, the 1964 by 12, that's the one we want. And that should already sound pretty great. Let's take a listen to this. That's pretty cool. Let's crank up the gain a little bit more. I back off the bass, crank up the mids a bit, and we're gonna go over to distinct mode. Here we go. That's cool, that is really cool. Now what we wanna do is set up a lead tone. So what we can do if we like is add a distortion pedal, but firstly, I'm gonna back the gain off here to about 36 or so, 35. And then we're gonna add an overdrive slash distortion. This first one actually sounds great. It's just called tube, tube Drive. More of everything. So that's still without reverb or anything. So let's add a little bit of reverb. We're gonna add the, the room one, which I kind of like the sound of. Back that off to about 24. Yeah. Let's add now a little bit of delay. This is a digital delay, but we're gonna to go to analog, turn the mix down, which is this control this time. Turn the feedback down to about 19 or 20. Let's take a listen. Now one of the cool things about this is you can also tap tempo by using this control here. You gotta turn it on first actually, so here we go. You can make it quicker. Now I'm playing single coils, there's a little bit of buzz. One of the great things about this is we have a noise suppressor, click that on, Turn up the threshold, and buzz be gone. How great is this? Beautiful.
Beautiful. Let's work out how to make a heavier sound now, and I'm over to the Leaf ALP200 electric guitar. It's loaded with humbuckers that you can also split coil. I'm going to leave it in humbucker mode. So we're going to start with this one with a different amp altogether. Let's find one that really rocks. I'm going to go over... I know where it is. It's this one right here. Cali LS Channel 2. And we're going to choose a different cab for this one. There's a really great sounding PV one. So this is it, the PV5550. We're going to use that. I'm going to go back to the amplifier here and just mix up some of the parameters, add a bit more gain, a little bit more bass, scoop the mids a bit, add a little bit more treble, and then also push this button. See, so yeah, we've got 6L6 selected. That's pretty cool. But we can also change up the bias if we want as well and make it a little hotter. That's the presence, this one right here. Let's give this a go. That sounds pretty cool, but it also sounds really, really dry. You really, in my opinion, need reverb with this to make it sound the nicest. So we're going to find a hall. <laughs> the holes are always good. Turn that down to about 13 for this one. Let's have a listen now. sounds pretty cool. We can also add a noise suppression. The more gain you add, the more noise you get. You won't need much, obviously, with humbuckers, so up to about seven completely removes any background noise, which, which I actually I really like. We're going to add a little bit of delay to this just to turn it into a bit more of a lead tone. Let's turn the feedback down, the mix down, the time down, although we can set that with the button. We can just use this, which is pretty cool. Let's give this a shot. <laughs> Now to my ear, that sounds pretty cool, but it needs a bit more treble. So we can just go in and fix that up nice and easily. Up here, turn this control out a bit more treble. We're gonna take a little bit of the low end out. Cranking up the gain to 100. Let's try this. <laughs> So that's not my kind of tone, but you know, that's just an example of basically what you can get out of it. Let's build a somewhat ambient slash weird sound now. I'm going to see what kind of strange sounds we can get out of this thing. And I'm starting with the platform of a Fender Twin and a Fender Twin 2x12 cabinet. And this is what that sounds like. So it sounds pretty much just like a twin without any reverb or delay. So let's start with a delay. I'm going to add something that's a little bit different in here. Let's use a mod delay. And we're also going to add a hall reverb, which I already just set up before. So this should hopefully sound pretty good. Now I've just turned tap tempo on, so if that's a bit too slow with the repeats, you can simply use this button here. All 
All right, now let's get kind of crazy. We'll add some compression because we can. I'm gonna add something a little bit different in terms of a boost here. Let's go over to the Muffy, which is a big muff fuzz pedal. We're just gonna mix it up now and get kind of crazy. We're gonna add a synth as well, <laughs> so because we can. And I think we're gonna also add a noise suppressor here. Let's turn this up just a little bit. So this is gonna sound completely random and weird and different, but we're gonna see how it sounds. And now with a delay off, just as a comparison. Yeah, it tracks pretty well, I gotta tell you. It actually tracks really, really well. Thanks for watching, folks. My name's Shane. So what do I think of this pedal overall? I think it records beautifully to the XLR inputs on my sound card. It has no problems with that at all. If that's your goal, you're definitely gonna get a kick out of this. Now, I just wanted to touch on the build quality. The build quality of this thing is absolutely fantastic. This is by far the most premium pedal I've seen from more, and it's a step above many of the others that are on the market as well, just in terms of its actual build quality and how it feels in the hand. It's got quite a bit of weight. We also get some skateboard sort of grip tape over here on the expression slash wah pedal as well. It's pretty intuitive. I haven't even read the instructions and I managed to get through it pretty easily. The only one small thing I had an issue with was trying to get the wah pedal to function, but I found a great tutorial video on that, which I'll also leave in the description if you're wondering how to get the wah pedal to work if you do own one of these. But overall, this is great. You can import IRs and all that kind of stuff, which I didn't even touch on. It's got lots of great sounds to get you started. So overall, I think this thing's pretty cool.